our teams are getting more players back into the lobby. We had a jailbreak in map number one. So these are going to be kind of boosted. But what's map number two going to have in store for us, Dandro? I don't know. Let's go ahead oh, and see as we're hopping back on in, kicking it up with our winners there. of yeah, game number there. one, DJ Moss, Z Smith, and sure. Ebates. They're starting to maybe look over there towards the Hadika Farms area of the map to go ahead and land. There is two most wanted. Then if you can manage to finesse these, I think this is a really solid way to get some early cash flow rolling. I think it's going to be really, really great for them to get this one started. I think it's going to be really smart for them. And I was curious to see where they were going to go because Ebates is one of those people that is just so hyper-focused on a lot of different minor details when it comes to Urzikstan. But a lot of things that he kind of... I won't say he pioneered it, but when you think back to years past of World Series of Warzone, he was one of the first people that I had witnessed kind of grabbing the helicopter, using the most wanted contract to start off your game and get your looting off to a nice pattern here. But also, DJ Moss and Co. used to land in Rastava shops, which is on the complete other side of Urzikstan. But with this new iteration of the squad, they're actually landing on the eastern side of Urzikstan. Definitely love to see that. You see Z Smith in your bottom right there has already found a level five Morse and trying to get some of those picks out of the air. So they already got one. It looks like DJ also already has one as well. I don't know if this was a, one that they found uh, already just out of a stash or something, but some early early uh firepower in the hands of this trio you see they do have that most wanted ebay did snag it obviously right now your goal is to try and find as many as these supply crates as you can start chunking down that timer of the most wanted a little trick in case you weren't aware of that one chat so you grab the most wanted any containers you open do help reduce the time on that so you're seeing a lot of players love doing this where you know if they can land kind of off the beaten path grab a most wanted in an area that they know there's a, a decent amount of chess you make it happen you can see they're five thousand dollars on the left that's a quick 15k for the squad if you can make it happen so looks like they're gonna be able to make that go on through as we come back on over to gabe coon blast and flanked this is sort of a little bit of a scrappy team in my opinion tiff because i feel like you got flanked and gabe coon kind of a duo coming in together and you bring in the veteran leadership of a blast who's been here he's been a winner before i like that maybe they bring him in as an igl you got two nice gunnies underneath you i think that this squad is not afraid to fight anyone else in this lobby they're not afraid but i haven't witnessed the next level out of them we kind of talk about all these teams that gearing up for world series of warzone you kind of have to keep pushing it to that next level but this team is still working on maybe their breakout moment they've been consistent they're improving week after week kind of running it back with that same squad particularly but i just want to see a very solid game out of them whether that gives them the confidence to know that what they're doing is working just haven't necessarily seen it yet but we, at least we are kind of going the route of getting the intel contracts looking for the next zone and meanwhile we get that black site notification and that's something that's interesting because not only does it give you that information but it's going to tell you exactly where soka shifty and biffle are gives them an idea they're starting to look a little bit deep you're seeing the sniper in hand the shot's a little bit off from flanked i'm trying to get that wall on your make it happen you can see gabe and blast they're up there somebody's trying to fire on back they know the flank is over here wow down bad Ooh, okay i don't really know what just happened there but that is a okay you're blast getting a little uh little unfortunate Maybe positioning there back on over though super heaven trick and autorize and autorize already sent to the gulag your squad made us in the roof on the roof all right well at least he was able to grab that knock on fuzzin before sent to the gulag super evan kind of posted up like breadman right we're just waiting for where that bounty is going to make that push it's empathy on the other side being hunted so it's likely bounty for bounty there goes the crack but you can see autorize actually loses the gulag so we're not going to have that kind of moment where he comes back in and is allowed him to get that information now we have to start playing around that we don't have cash and we'll need to look for other options to get autorize back into the lobby 
Definitely can kind of cause your uh, game to get a little bit chalked there. You see Trick already eliminated as well. I got to imagine that was probably, yeah, that's a sniper shot from somewhere. Brings them on down. You see Super Evan take an uh, errant shot through a couple of uh, places of the van there. And it looks like this team is maybe trying to full send them. I definitely think that's a smart idea. If you are this team, the double smokes come on out. Can they make this exit here? You're seeing the smokes get dropped. Super Evan maybe just trying to hold an angle. Can catch someone. They've been able to back on up over to here. You don't have much left, though, to make this happen. You got one more smoke in the back pocket of Super Evan. You seen that to drop the rest of his plates towards Trick. I don't hear him. Yeah, one's to our left. He's at the buildings that we were at. This isn't good. Like, I'm just going to lay it plain, right? They were out in map number one in 30th place. If you're already running into in this first engagement and Empathy is getting lit up, Super Ev, no plates, just trying to fend off his positioning before he jumps, but the knock comes through, but not before Prodigy on the other end is able to take the issue. Now, with Super Evan in the Gulag, at least they have three eliminations, but this is all relying on Empathy and Super Ev's ability to get out of the Gulag. Yeah, you definitely do not want to be going to the gulag this early. It's going to be a very rough situation. We'll see if they can make that happen. Back on over. Kaylee, T, and Nate, dog. As T, unfortunately, it looks like somebody is on top of her. We'll be able to bring her on down. Kaylee trying to manage to hit some of these snipes from range, but it's going to be tough. Looking up over, Nate, dog has been able to regroup. Yeah. Some live pings would be great right now from Kaylee if she can manage to get them. T bleeding on out on the roof. Do you try and stick the res? Or do you maybe say, hey, we just need to be able to win this fight? Looks like they are going to try and commit. Maybe we'd like to see the trophy system go on down as well. Oh, and like, for that reason alone, so it's going to be Zeppa with the C4 taking out T. Right. It's rather unfortunate, but it's really nice to see T here. And although we chow together, Nate Dog is the one that's going to be able to grab that knock onto Zeppa. But is there any other signs of Limax and Levi nearby? Kaylee's going to be able to prefer that self res and get back on their feet right. thanks to Nate. But T, full dead here. We do have the cash to get her back in. And as soon as we peek. Wow. I mean, she peaked for maybe two seconds, and that's enough with the bouncy oh! face. But it doesn't matter. Robstar on the other side, still able to take down Nate Dog and Kaylee. But my God, was that out in a blaze of glory? <laughs> I want a screen cap of just both <laughs> those bouncing baddies going, and it's like uh, unfortunate images that precede, you know, events uh, that was there because that was insane. Back you on asked over for though. It. I did. That is true. I did ask for it. Uncivil Queen has tried to make their way towards this portable buy station. This other team not going to let it happen. Thankfully, she does indeed have the uh, self revive. We'll be able to come back on in. My brother's staring at us, too. I broke one. This is what you're going to get with that sniper. Live ping, and I'm a wall bang him. Okay, do it. That's toxic. I love it. The bullet pen on this Moors is absolutely insane, even after it got uh, adjusted, I'll say, uh, that was there. So, I mean, yeah, I definitely like the play to say, hey, hit the wall bang. I might be able to, uh, give me the live ping, I might be able to hit him on through, but drops the Moors, picks back on up that DG with the thermal as they're starting to look through. This is a solid position. We've seen teams kind of hang out here in this building a lot before Tiff, but my worry is that this zone is about to pull you across over to Cargo. And if you're making a late rotation, it's so easy to get stuck in the water with teams looking at over you while you're trying just to make it back to land. And I think that's a good shout, because if you think about all the teams and all the times that we've seen this rotation in particular, you want to get ahead of it. You don't want to be one of the three squads that are still over here in Old Town and Sea Town waiting to cross the river, because you know how many teams like to sit up in high ground on top of buildings at cargo. And even then more, when you start to pull outside of cargo on that hill, and if we're already pulling that way, you want to make sure that you've hit that rotation. But for now, Uncivil Queen and Co., we have a few moments left before that that initial zone starts to collapse and that gas will be around them they're going to be okay here they can play for the time being but then you have to start thinking about what is our best course of action to cross the water right you're going to have to swim across and you don't have the redeploy because that's on the other side in cargo coming back on over rated prospect in my alpo rated is staying alive by the skin of his teeth thankfully tempered will help keep him alive as whoever this is 
has some eyes. Can he manage to play from a different angle? I like this little bit of a cheeky setup. Thermobaric grenade will hopefully catch somebody pushing on in. Oof. Thermal in hand on that striker. Nobody's decided to push on through yet, but you are seeing the bird's eye come online. He's got some early tags on in. Sees this player trying to run away. We'll be able to find one. Okay. That's a full thirst. Who's nearby though? Get my trade, man. It's going to be on Rational, Scummin, and Dongy. On Rational is the one that Raiden was able to fully elim, so we're looking for two. But you guys know that Scummin can be one of the most shifty players. Kind of snaky in terms of trying to, to find him. But we just keep pushing on forward. They're going to shoot out the balloons. And as soon as Raiden kind of extends out, he gets tagged up from the back, but luckily has a shred of cover here with this building. And, well... Very typical building for that squad to be perched up upon, but Raiden makes it out with just an inch of HP to spare. Yeah, I really like this. Raiden's been doing a great job since we've come on over here to, to play their life to the best of their ability. Has the bomb drone. Thinks that there's somebody up here. Well, there's at least one player who's in the gas, and he's kind of chasing him with this bomb drone, at least to give you the live pings. And it looks like they're trying to make a deep run, and that's scumming. Going to be able to confirm that one with the bomb drone. So you saw Unrational get taken out into the canal. Scumming gets deleted. That means that maybe Doggy's got to be here somewhere. Go ahead and peak Resolute coming on in. But Doggy will get taken out. Some patience from Raided. We'll be able to find them, sending them all to the Gulag very early on here. He chowed that. He really peaked hey, that yeah. roof knowing it was a 1v3 situation. You see the tokens kind of being pinged and picked up. But as we continue on that rotation, now granted where the circle is going, we do have that other bounty here that is on prospect and is nearby them and immediately grabbing that squad wipe, eliminating that. And well, we're just going to keep on rotating it. I've been very impressed with this squad, but where the zone is pulling, we could kind of work our way up towards Seaport. Now we've seen this zone a lot in Warzone Total Frenzy, and it often occurs around that train tracks that cuts between the apartments and Seaport itself. Yeah, and you kind of have to make the choice of do i want to play the 50 50 on the port side or on the apartment side and we can see a squad that's already made their way over towards the apartment side it's castillo z dark and amir looks like we're already starting to see some grenades come on through and we'll look who it is the winners of map number one dj moss with a thermal barrack grenade will drop onto the top they have this guardian blocking off the staircase i do love that we don't really see that come into use uh, all too often but I like it in this situation on here as they're starting to just peek on out at some of these other buildings. With, of course, this more sniper in hand. He maybe can sometimes get a quick pick, but looks like for now they're just kind of hold their own. Still is a duo, and I'm not sure how we're going to get that third back into the lobby. There's two mobiles surrounding them, but if they could wipe a team that's looking to take their position and they can find a flare, that would be beneficial for them. But for now, a lot of these smokes that people are using to help them cover on their rotations or just aid in their engagements, it also puts up a beacon. It's like, okay, we know there's a squad over here, at least two, or they potentially wouldn't be using that. So now we're going to extend out towards the back, maybe inch our way closer towards that mobile buy station. Definitely a solid idea. You can see they're starting to make their way over towards this vehicle. I think, you know, you called it out. They want to hit this mobile buy station. Thankfully, the vehicle should hopefully give them the cover. Somebody, though, is starting to light this on up. You're seeing the buy come on Ooh. in. The smokes will get dropped. Amir trying to do their best to stay alive. This team has him on lock. Another smoke should hopefully give him the cover, but the thermals are in full effect here, Tip. You're seeing this absolutely light up Amir. He's not going to be able to grab that truck. We'll have to come back on over here towards this building, but knows that there's some people behind him. You're seeing the smoke, the shot comes on out, but you're now in a little bit of a rough spot. If you are Amir, you got a team at your back. You got a team in front of you. You have to be able to get away from here and meet up with your squad. To be fair, I love that we're taking the vehicle to the mobile buy station. It's solely for the fact that we do have no bans and people are using thermals galore. So you're not going to be able to just smoke out the buy and be safe. He at least added that extra layer of cover. Now we have the full three stack back up. We're sitting at four eliminations and we're about to move into that kind of mid to late game. But for your match one winners on your screen, DJ Moss Z Smith Ebates, currently on UAV. We're not running ghosts. Remember that, guys. A lot of us have locked in with bird's eye. But we're sitting in a solid position here in condos, looking down that train tracks. Now we just have to see where everything is going to start pulling towards. 
Yeah, and this kind of becomes the game right here. You can obviously see that with that PA, there are some teams across the way. There are some teams that are here in the apartments. DJ has spotted a team deep. You saw him take a quick little shot. I think they were at a shot in return. Everybody now just trying to be able to hit with these snipers. I love that he has a recon in this back pocket. That should hopefully give them some of the info they need if they need to scout out a rotation potentially nearby. Camping the stairs. Somebody's just trying to maybe try and push on up here. Thermo barricade starts getting cocked. Drops it on hit. Guess that confirms. So they know that somebody's got to be here close. As they are just waiting. And oh my gosh. Okay. From the heavens. Come on in. And well, look who it is. It's SSD. But it looks like Ethan is going huge. Ethan out here being the super sub that we needed here in Lou. Ethan. But jump on board. We'll check in with that squad later. Ryda, Zepti, you know, on your screen. And well, they've made their way into the seaport side. Now, the last time we saw a similar zone as this, it was Shifty Soka Biffle that had been able to clear out all of the warehouses on this side and were able to take the win on this map. Now, if Ryda, Inno, and Zepti can do the same, this could be a very nice game for them here in match number two. Yeah, remember though, one of those other teams that we saw make it to the very end also in that game, Sage, Swag, and Adrian. They were kind of playing underneath in a little bit of a hidey hole before Amir Castillo and Dark tried to fly on through them, right? So I feel like you uh, have the opportunity if you are either of these teams to kind of hold on out. This zone is pulling a little bit more towards the seaport side. I'll be curious to see what side does it go on through. You're hearing the train come on in as well. If somebody's able to grab control of that, that becomes another piece of cover that maybe you can make happen. But on the other side, Ryder takes a peek, sees somebody. It's Oki. Answers back with their own snipe. It's kind of a 1v1 sniper battle for some of these squads here. And you got to be able to hit these shots quickly. It's rather unfortunate. You can see, I know that frustration, right? It's like, I have the better side of zone. I am doing everything that I needed to be doing. But when you've got one-shot snipers in the lobby, and you can see Brax on your screen with it in hand, and 40 total bullets. If you hit every shot, you are wreaking havoc on the lobby. Now, granted, we're sitting with 21 squads left in the lobby, so still not into the good multipliers and only one elimination. But I feel like this squad has everything that they have and they need right now to put on a good showing. And with that thermal, not only are you getting information, but you have the potential to whittle down the resources that we move into zone number six. Oh, yeah. I love that. Brax yeah. with the patience. Sees the good, thermal. Good. It's going to be noobs on the receiving end of that headshot. Yeah. Not going to be enough, though, to be able to maybe full send that team. But what it does maybe buy you is a little bit of opportunity to drop these smokes and start running. You're starting to see some of the shots rain on in. Juju takes a couple of tags. Looks like I think some thermite's getting thrown down as well. But that will buy them the space they need as they've been able to find themselves here on the bottom of this warehouse. I actually really like this positioning right here. You can kind of hold this right side. They can only enter in from one of two angles. And if you just sit at the edge of that, you don't have to worry about getting caught by surprise. On the other side though, on the apartments, we said you gotta pick. Do you wanna play the apartments or do you wanna play the seaport? It's pulling towards the seaport. It's not gonna be a fat rotation for SSD. I love what we're doing though. We are doubling down underneath the bridge, looking for that long wrap, and you're gonna surprise every single player that was playing underneath. Attract being the first one. Shifty go unfortunately goes down, and Soka, one HP and a dream, and everything falls apart. Tried to stay alive. It actually looked like a self was able to come on through with a little bit of a trade on board with Assault Lovey and Clutch Belk here. Two right now for Belk. As they found themselves in the containers. PA going up over the top. A little bit of room is all they need. Can they take that building to stay alive? 12 other squads here, Tiff, as we get to the end of zone number seven. A shoulder from Belk will give him some information. Teams to the right. There's got to be a team in the building ahead of them as well. So you can't get too aggressive here. Nice knock straight on to Tommy. That's gonna be the new roster for them. The fool comes through. They said they wanted to play high ground. Well, you gotta clear it out first, and that's a great starting point to be able to do so. But for Clutch, they wanna clear out this information. Not the pressure from the shock, but immediately 
re-navigates accordingly. I really like what we're trying to do here. We're just looking at every different angle, but as soon as you commit too far to the left, you're going to lose out on Assault now, relegated down to a duo for the end game. 11 total squads still in the mix. I'm not hearing a lot of comms of how they want to play this, so it kind of just seems like Belk is the player trying to make plays and, and play entry right now, but not really comming to the teammates about what the game plan is, so I feel like a little bit of miscommunication there is what caused them to lose Assault. They find that same area we saw Braxton in on earlier, earlier as they're trying to get up to height. Well, look who is on height right now. It's who we were on board with. You got Juju, Youngsters, and Braxton here at the top. Still 10 squads remaining as Brax has full range of everyone around them. It's a nice quick little snipe. They'll be able to get the tag on with the teams. They got to go far here, Tiff, as this zone starts pulling away. No gas mask for Brax either, and it's kind of unfortunate, you know, when we saw from Gludge Belk, I was expecting them to grab high ground, and then you look to the squad that already has it, well, Juju able to get that full down on to Clutch Belk, and where your dolphin dive into the other roof, that's going to help us. Someone's going rogue with an LTV in zone, and we're still cleaning up eliminations. There's a knock on to Prospect, so we're whittling down multiple different squads here, about to be in the top five. How are we going to be able to navigate around the mortar strike? I feel like actually if you are Braxton, you have the opportunity to just jump on this other roof that's right in front of you. Continue to hold this high ground. It's caused success for them so far. We're down to the final six teams. Four for Brax. Looking at some of these teams that are just playing in the smoke below. You have this LTV that's trying to be a little bit of cover, but it doesn't matter when you got a Morris in hand. That is Breadman getting taken out. Brax, very low HP. I don't know if you're going to be able to survive this, sir, but the PDS comes on through. A clutch last second moment on the other side we got amir we got castillo we got dark who are playing on side the low ground here can they manage to stay alive here tiff you have to get the reload if you're amir but you have a flurry of grenades coming on through castillo gonna be able to help on out that's zepti going down oh and now we're into the end game here three squads now down to the final two a 3v2 and amir and co they are dead center of zone playing around this bridge they've spotted out the opposing team we just need to work around on the truck but patience is a virtue but when you throw out those lethals and they connect with the railing Castillo that's knock on to youngsters this is gonna be that emit NA squad and well the last player standing we hit a melee we close it out we win match number two with 21 eliminations Woo! I was a little bit curious to see if they can clutch that one up from the low ground, but it was just a beautiful plays in the smokes. You might have thermals that are there, but look how happy they are. They clutched that one on up. Omit and A, they had the high ground on the roof there, but I think they just realized like, hey, we have to make a play to try and get into zone to play from a different angle. I almost sort of love to see one of them stay up on top of that roof to be able to then play a different side but guess what it's amir castillo and dark 21 eliminations a current score of 54 i feel like that's going to be a very solid game for them yeah it's pretty solid right they were in 12th place leading into match number two so if you've already got yourself into 54 points i can imagine that's going to shoot you up the leaderboard but for now when you think about kind of their trajectory of that game and making it over towards seaport we got to jump in with them prior to, I believe they were sitting in condos, right? And they were a duo at that point, Dandro. If Amir yeah. doesn't extend out, grab the LTV, hit that mobile buy station and back and grab that third teammate, this could have been a completely different game. That Hail Mary play saved